In this video, I'm going to show you how to use your web dev skills to get paid. Step 1. Find a problem people are having and solve that problem using the world's most baller framework for a framework, Nux3. If you need help getting started with that, check out my previous video. This is number 2 in the series. Step 2. Make it rain. Dollar dollar bill y'all. We'll connect our API to the Stripe API so we can use their checkout system. Once we have subscriptions up and running, we'll set up webhooks so that we can monitor the status of our subscriptions. Since the last video, we hit 500 subscribers. Thank you to everyone who subscribed. If you'd like to code along, then check out section two, which will include all of the code from the previous tutorial. If you check out section three, you'll get the code that we're about to code now. So we'll start out by installing Stripe. We'll do yarn add Stripe. And then we want to add a few things to our Nux config. Here we will add the runtime config with private and public properties. And in the private, we'll have the Stripe secret key, and that will only be available on the server. In the public, we'll have the app domain, which will be available everywhere. In the env file, we need to add these properties. So a app domain, which for development will be localhost 3000, along with the Stripe key. Quickly to show you where you can find the Stripe key, if you're logged into Stripe and you're on the dashboard, go over to developers here on the top right, and then to API keys on the left. And then you can see your secret key here, which you can reveal and then click the copy. I realize I doxed myself, but you know, it's only a test key, knock yourself out and have fun with it. So that is what we need to do for the initial setup. Now we can create a new page for subscribing. We'll go here and we will add a subscribe directory along with an index.view. Here we'll add the script tags. Notice the setup and language. Then we'll use the router and the user. And if the there isn't a signed in user, then we want to send them back to the register page. For the template, it looks like a lot of code, but 99% of it is just styling. So we'll just skip over that. And you, if you want to look at that in detail, you can check out the GitHub repository. I just want to focus on the functionality for this video. The main important parts are these two buttons. We have a button and we have a form. For the button, if there is no user, then we want to have them go to the register page. This is the function we just showed up top. And if there is a user, however, we want to send them directly to the Stripe checkout page. And we'll do that by posting to our API. We'll do some stuff on our API and then we will send them to the Stripe checkout page where they can make a payment. So what you will need is a lookup key, which is your price, and then whoever is actually subscribing. So the user ID. To get this price, we go back to Stripe and you go to products. Here you can create a product. Add a product, fake product, and let's say 20 euro a month, and then you can just save the product. Now, one thing to keep in mind is if you fill out everything as you need it in production, you won't have to do it twice because you'll see this copy to live mode here and you can set everything up on testing, make sure everything works, and then you can copy all of that information to live mode. So just a quick tip if you don't want to have to fill all this information out for development and then again for production, all right? So that is how you get that Stripe price key. So then I can show you here is the price key and you can just copy it by clicking. And that's the key that we add here. This is if you have one option. So if you're only selling one thing. So on in this particular site, there's only one type of subscription. Obviously, if you had multiple types, you could break this up into multiple forms. So let's see what that looks like. Localhost 3000 slash subscribe. And here's what the subscribe page looks like. And as you see, we have the sign up and subscribe, which makes sense because we're not logged in. And we see if user is null, sign up and subscribe. And that should send us to the register page if we click it, which it does. Then we can just sign up using our credentials. I don't know if I already have this user in, we shall see. All right, now we get sent to the dashboard, which we can click this go back home because we haven't created the dashboard yet. And then we go back to premium membership. So now we have the subscribe now. And if we click here, we're going to get a 404 because we haven't created the endpoint yet. And we do. So let's create that endpoint. In the server API directory, we will create a subscribe.host.ts. We can add our imports at the top create an event handler and we will pass that event to the use body from the use body we'll get the lookup key and user id and then we'll get the user from the user repository and then we'll get a subscribe url from the stripe service which we will create shortly so we'll get the user and the url back and then we will update the user with that new stripe customer id that we will create in this function here and then we're going to redirect to the stripe checkout all right, in the user repository, we'll just need to create the get user by ID 
and we'll grab the ID, username, and email, and then we'll get a update Stripe customer ID, which we'll just get the user by the email, and then we'll update that Stripe customer ID. So let's create this Stripe service. So if we go to services, we can create a Stripe service.ts, and we will also add our imports. Here we're going to create a new Stripe instance, and notice this key is the same key we added to this Nux config. Then we'll create the function, which we will accept the lookup key and the user, and we'll get the email off of that user. We'll grab that price from Stripe. This is the Stripe package at work. And then we will create a user in Stripe using our email. And then we, we will add that to this user object. Then we will create a session with Stripe and it's a checkout session, the billing address collection to auto. And then here are our line items. This is that price ID, which is the same as the lookup key we're giving. This just ensures that we actually have that price in Stripe and we'll have a have it in subscription mode. And on success, it will go to this URL, which this checkout session ID will allow us to immediately go and manage the subscription, which I'll show you later. And this domain is the same domain that we also added here. And that's what where it will redirect if somebody cancels or is successful. And then we're passing along that customer ID so that we know who subscribed. Then we're going to pass back the URL that we're going to redirect to plus the user. And we need to add this type here, which is sub post request. And it's just the string in the user so that we know what kind of type we're getting back here. And if we come back here, that should be working. Let's see. Let's just restart the server. And now it is redirecting. Great. Now we can fill out the form and then get redirected back. So let me fill it out real quick and then we can subscribe. All right. And then it successfully redirected us back with that session ID that we expected. And now we can create this success page. But before we do that, I think it would be very interesting to show you something. Uh, two things, actually. One is if we go and we check out this most recent subscription. So go to more subscriptions in the dashboard and we can check out the subscription, we can see that it is already gone through. And if we click through to the user, we'll see this user ID here. And if we check in Prisma Studio, we should have that same ID. So CHPI, CHPI, so correct. So we know that that was correct. Now, obviously this was sort of a happy path scenario. Perhaps your user already has a customer ID in Stripe and you would wanna add that check before you create that user. So perhaps it already has it. And if it does, we could add that check here um, in the Stripe service, for example. We could see, we could say um, if user dot Stripe customer, and we can just say, if it's null, then do this. So that will only be necessary if um, they don't have a customer ID. And so this customer ID, it should always be the same as this Stripe user ID. So that's one way to prevent the duplication of a customer in Stripe. That's one issue. And then we would need to update the return. And actually I can show you the main thing that I want to show you now. And that is if we were to try to update the user here, and we can try that out. So update the user here right after we update that. Let's add that. What you'll see is that we're not able to update it. So add here, let's clean up those imports. And also here we can just update Stripe customer ID. We can just add the user there. Now if we do this exact same thing here, let's see, let's go back. Um, yeah, so we'll update the Stripe customer ID no matter what in this case. We'll go to membership. Now, if we do the same thing there, you'll see we get a 404. The reason we get this 404 is nothing is being written to the response in Nuxt. And the default behavior of Nuxt, if nothing is written, if that response is completely blank, so to say, then it will return a 404, which I am not convinced that that's a great idea, but that's how it is at the moment. Perhaps they'll change it in the future. I don't know, but it took me a lot of debugging to figure out that I believe this is a segmentation fault, but if you run into a problem where you're just getting a 404 back, then a little rearranging of the code might help you. So if I don't update it there, and I instead update it in this calling function, it will work. It's something to do, I believe, with some memory faults. So 
perhaps too much memory being allocated. I'm not sure. It's um, when it's trying to access memory, it doesn't have access, should not have access to. And it just basically hard stops and then NUX, the server recovers and sends us this sort of recovers and sends us just this 404 back. But if you debug through, you will find that it just completely breaks the process. So I just wanted to show you that. To, so if you ever see something like that, you'll be aware of it. Um, now we can, let's update this and say, um, should update user. And yeah, we'll make that a Boolean. That way we can say, let should update customer equal to false. And then if it doesn't have it, then we should set it equal to true. Because we can save ourselves a database call. And then we'll just pass that back. Let's see. Why is it complaining? Oh, should I, I called it should update user. I need to get those terms straight. Should update user. Should update user. Should update user. Okay. Now we can call that here. Should update user. And if it should, it will. And if not, it won't. Exactly. And we can get rid of that. Thank you, Copilot. All right. So that way we can save um, an updating of the user ID. All right. Let's try to create another subscription for this user and we'll see if that process is working. And so this user, we see they have one subscription now. And we would expect for them to have two if we do this again. And we would expect that customer ID to be the same. All right, we were successfully redirected. And if we refresh here, we should see two subscriptions. We do not. Let's see if it changed the user ID. It did. So let's debug why it did that. So if it does not have a Stripe customer ID, so here's the main crux of it all, and it shouldn't be updating if it does have it. So let's, let's debug together. Why not? Show some real world debugging here. All right, set the debugger on. Let's get back. All right, let's see what's happening here. And we'll see what is, it is Stripe customer ID is undefined. Ah, now, see, now that's a very e easy debug. Here, when we ask for the user, we only asked for the ID, the username, and the email. We need the Stripe customer ID as well. And if we do that, so yarn dev. All right. And we'll do that same process again, but this time we have that correct thing. So now we want to look at this user because it's already updated. We'll check this user out. We go to, so we should be able to just go to customers and the last user, create it. And that's with this FUR at the end. And they have one subscription. And now it should work correctly. And it already saved our stuff, which is great which is also a sign <laughs> that it did have the customer ID and we can process now. And when we look it up, the user ID should not have changed and the customer should have two subscriptions at the end. So redirect it successfully. Let's refresh. And the customer ID did not change. That's good. And when we refresh here, we have two subscriptions as we expected. So we successfully debugged that problem. Now we can get to creating this success page once the user successfully subscribes. And if we go to pages subscribe, let's add a success page, success.view. And here we will add our script tags. We'll use the runtime config and the route. And we will get the app domain from our 
runtime. And then we will add a session ID and we'll say it is equal to this route query session ID or an empty string. So we'll be giving at least an empty string up to the endpoint. Once we create it, we will submit to this endpoint using a post request and we will add this session ID. We will give that se session ID up. The app domain, now that I think about it, I think you could just go like this and it would be the same result. We can actually get rid of that. That's, we'll call that legacy code. We can actually get rid of almost everything in there. So we actually only need that. And I believe that should do the same thing. So now we can create this Stripe create portal session. And if we go to the server, we will add a Stripe directory here. Stripe, let's just, can I just copy that? Yep. Dot TS. So create portal session dot TS in the Stripe directory. And here we will add our imports and we'll use the runtime config so that we can new up the Stripe instance. You could extract that, extract that um, so that you only have to new it up once in the entire app. For this tutorial, we won't worry about it. You can clean things up as you wish. And then we're going to get the body and we're going to get the session ID off of that body. And we're going to set the URL, the return URL to the app domain that we've set up in Nux config and in our ENV file. And then we're going to get a checkout session from Stripe using that session ID. And once we do that, we can get the user from that checkout session and create a portal session. That portal session is where the user, um, well, the URL that the portal se session gives is where the user can manage their subscriptions. And then we're just going to redirect them just like we redirect them to the Stripe checkout. We can redirect them to the Stripe portal. I will resubscribe. And we should land on that page again. This time it should actually show a real page. Subscribe success. Subtract subscribe success. All right, I'll have to restart the server. So when in doubt, restart the server. We can try that whole process again. Let's see. It's ready. All right, now we are on this, you are subscribed and we see this manager subscription, which if you recall, that's going to submit this post request to this endpoint that we just set up. So let's see if that works. And it didn't. And the reason is it says page not found. Oh, I see. I have a typo here. All right. It happens. <laughs> let's see. Let me try that again. All right. Now we're here again. And Bam, we get redirected and now we have three subscriptions that we can play with. And if we go back, we get sent back to that home page that we specified. All right. All right. That seems like a pretty good place to stop. We can now set up subscriptions in Stripe. In the next video, we're going to set up webhooks so that we know whenever the status of a subscription changes. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell if you haven't already so that you're notified when that video comes out. Also, where can you go if you need help? My go-to place is the Nuxt Discord. And here you'll see there is a Nuxt 3 channel. And there you can post questions. And hey, the even more fulfilling thing is to help people when they have a question, if you know the answer. So there's one place, and I've actually recently just set up a Discord, which I'm very lonely here. So if you have any direct questions for me, feel free to sign up there. I'll leave a link in the description. But those two Discord places are a place where you can ask a quick question and get some feedback. Keep in mind, sometimes it takes a little time to get answers because we're all on, in different time zones. I'm in uh, the Central European time zone, and... Um, you have to be a little bit patient sometimes, but it's a great place to get um, answers from real people real quick that are specifically tuned to this topic. All right, I will see you in the next one.